Hey y'all, I'm going to skip the normal introduction and get right into the video this time. Um, this video, I had a request to do this uh, from a member of one of the mini CNC groups I'm a member of on Facebook. And uh, he wanted to know basically how to apply some text to a curve. Uh, some text above the top of a curve and some text below the bottom of a curve. So there are a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. And um, so let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here. And um, I've already done this once and had to restart my recording. So a lot of my measurements and settings are already set for me. I'm working with a work piece here, a piece of material that's 12 inches wide in X, 12 inches tall in Y. My material thick, thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. I've got my Z0 set to the top of my material. My XY datum set to the center this time. I'm working in inches and I'm going to go ahead and accept these settings as they sit. So the first thing we're going to need to get is we're going to need to get some text and then we're going to need to create a circle right here in the middle. So I'm going to go over here to draw text and just go ahead and use a Times New Roman font. It's something that we're all familiar with. I'm going to align the text to the center. I'm going to go with a text height of three quarters of an inch and I'm going to anchor that text on my X0, Y0. So I'll go up here into the text block and I'll type in my standard phrase. This is no space hard return by hitting enter sample text. Now the reason I did not put a space after the end of the word is is because again in the computer world a space is a character and when it comes time to center this up if there is a space there that's one more character to kind of throw alignment off now it's not going to throw it off very much but enough to drive you crazy if you don't know what you're looking for so by not putting that space there we have a true count of the number of characters here so our text will line up alright now we'll go ahead and hit apply take a look at it and my character width is just fine so we'll go ahead and accept that my hitting close now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this down out of my way down here and I'm gonna draw me a circle and again since I've already done this once everything is all set up I want a six inch diameter circle and I'm going to anchor the center point of that circle on my X0, Y0. So we'll go ahead and create that and close it. Now we're doing just fine. So uh, what we want to do is we want to put these two words up above the top of this circle and we want to put these two words down here below the bottom of this circle. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert this solid circle into two separate arcs so we can apply this text to this arc or curve and apply this text to this arc or curve so I've gone ahead and I've selected my circle now I'll type N on my keyboard to go into node editing mode and now we see up here we have one green point or node and three black ones. The green indicates the vector start point. Now because this is a closed vector the start point and the end point are the same node or point. We also have these clear points. These just indicate the center of the arc between these two points. Okay. Um, now this start point here that is the point to where if we were to start cutting or engraving this circle the bit would lift up from its home position come over here to this point plunge in and start cutting until it gets all the way around to the end we don't want to 
that to happen. We want to convert this circle into two separate arcs, this arc above the uh, y0 and this arc below the y0. So we'll do that by cutting the vector, this closed vector, right here and right here. So you notice I get my cursor up over the point, it turns into a set of crosshairs. That lets me know that anything I do right now on the keyboard or with my mouse will affect that point. So I'll right click and down here in this context menu I'll, uh, menu, I'll select cut vector. Now that moved my start point down here because this is now an open vector that has to be the start point. Then I'll come over here to this one and do the same thing. Right click, select cut vector. Now I have an active vector down here and another up here. Now you'll notice the start point for the upper vector is over here. We don't want that. We need to change that so that the start point is over here as well. And the reason for that is we read from left to right. And when VCarve Pro applies text to a vector, it places the f it it'll it will align to the center in our case, but the first character in this line of text will start at the start point. Now if our start point is over here, it's going to place the letter T up here somewhere, then the letter H, then the letter I, then the letter S, obviously. But by moving our start point over here, by right clicking on that point, make start point, now when we apply this text to this arc, the T will be over here, H, I, S, etc. So if you ever get into a situation where you apply your text to a curve, and it's backwards or upside down, you know you'll need to undo that, go back into node editing, and move your start point over to the left. It's one of those simple things that is easy to recover from, but if you don't know that it's there, it can drive you nuts looking for it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and type N again to get out of node editing mode, because I've got my arc up here. I've got my arc down here, so I've got my curves to apply the text to. Now I'm going to pick up my text, move it up here a little bit, then deselect it to get out of move object, and I need, now I need to split this text up into two separate lines, because as it sits right now, if I just select this text and apply it to the curve, it's going to take all of it. I want to apply this to the top and this down below. And the way to do that, in, the easy way to do that in VCarve is to select the text, then right click it, and come up to break text block into lines. That's the reason I use that hard return over here in draw text between this line and this line was to separate it into separate lines. So now when I click on break text block into lines, it creates two separate blocks of text. Now it's just a simple matter of applying the text to the curve itself. We'll select this text, which we want to go up here. We select the text first, then hold down shift, select the vector we want to apply that text to, come over to wrap text along a curve here under my create vectors category, and click that icon. Now in this case what we want to do is we want to maintain that text size. So I'll make sure my radio button is here. I'm not going to touch the text spacing just yet. I want the text to be positioned above the curve and I want an offset distance of a quarter of an inch. I don't want this text to sit right on top and touch this curve. I want it to be about a quarter of an inch above. So I enter an offset distance of 0.25. I want it, the text aligned to the middle of my work material, to the middle of that curve. And I want to align the text with the curve. Now if you 
take a look at this example down here, you can see the letter A is pointing off in this direction. The letter C is pointing off in this direction. The B is pointed straight up because it's in the center. That's how I want this to look. I could just as easily click on Keep Vertical, and that would keep all of the letters, all the characters, oriented vertically. But I think that would look kind of clunky in this particular case. So I'm going to go ahead and align it to the curve. We'll go ahead and hit Apply to preview it. And I think that's going to work out just fine for us. We've got our arc down here. We've got our text about a quarter of an inch above. And everything looks nice and centered. Now I can come back over here to my text spacing. And this, is, this differs from kerning just a little bit in that any of the changes I make here apply to all of the letters equally. So if I scrunch this in a little bit and adjust the spacing down here, if you zoom in, oops, let me zoom in here, you can see we've got some alignment issues going on. And these are touching one another. Let me zoom back out click off to the side here, reactivate my text and my vector to reactivate my form over here. And let me move this spacing out just a little bit. Hit apply here, keep going. Kind of spread these out some. And we can now go in, we've got these to where they're no longer touching one another and we can now go in and use kerning to adjust the gaps here, here, and in here a little bit. But this, what this does is this applies the same changes to each and every letter, all equally. So if you want, need to adjust the space between individual letters, this is not the place to do it. So this looks OK. I'm going to go ahead and apply that change, hit close, and we have our text centered with our arc. Now we'll do the same thing down here on the bottom. Select the text, hold down shift, select the curve, apply text to the curve. Again, we want to maintain the text size. I'm not going to mess with the spacing just yet, but in this case, we want the text below the curve. I want to go ahead and keep the same offset distance and I want to align it to the middle and align it to the curve. Let's hit apply and see how that looks. Now in the case of going below the line, if you look up here, the bases of all of the letters are a uniform quarter inch. But if you look down here, because we have tall letters in our capital T and S, and that tall letter L, this is where that quarter inch is measured from. That quarter inch space between the letter L and the vector is a little, is it's right on a quarter of an inch, but the space between the capital T and the arc is a little bit greater. And of course, the small letters, the gap is going to be even greater. So it's something to take into consideration. Now, you can go over here and adjust this. Let's say we wanted to go try an eighth of an inch. So we make that 0.125, and you see how it updated itself. That brings the text a little closer to the line here. But generally speaking, it kind of balances it out. Now, it's just going to be a judgment call for you in what you think looks the best. If this is acceptable to you, then we can go ahead and hit close. If it's not acceptable to you, you can get in here and play with this a little bit and select different offset, offset distances. You can always go back and re-edit these later on should 
a client or customer come along and say, no, I don't like it that way. I want this further out or I want that closer in. You can come by and modify this as long as you have not converted these to curve, these, this text to curves. But I'll get into that at a, in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this right now, but I think the spacing needs to be tightened up quite a bit. So I'll go back up here into my text spacing, kind of reduce that some bring it down a little bit more to where it doesn't look so that's a little bit too much let's bring that back out let's well maybe yeah I'm gonna leave that as it is I'll probably end up tightening these up but I don't want these too tight maybe just a nudge more not too much I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that so, now we're good right there. Now, I'm going to do a couple of different scenarios here. And that if this arc is no longer needed, if you have a piece of artwork in here and these arcs are no longer needed, it's a simple matter of selecting one, hold shift, select the other, and delete those arcs. It has nothing to do with the text. Now I'm going to hold down control hit Z to undo that and bring my arcs back. If you're going to be V carving for the sake of argument, uh, V carving this arc to put a piece of artwork inside, uh, you'll need to rejoin these two vectors. And the way we'll do that is select both of them, come over here join open vectors. Right now we have two open vectors. After joining we'll have one closed. Join, close that form, and there we go. We have our text wrapped around the circle. We can now take that circle and we can v-carve that. Getting back into the text for just a minute, we can come back over here and adjust our spacing, zoom in a little bit here, and these need to be separated. Now when adjusting spacing, I'll go in between the two letters, and if I click, it brings them closer together. If I hold shift and click, it separates them. So I want just a little bit of a nudge between this H and the I. Release shift, come in and tighten this T and this H up just a little bit. And I'm going to close up this gap just slightly. Yeah, a little bit more. The only thing is, is now that I've played around with the spacing, I've kind of thrown my alignment off. So I'll go over here to Align Selected Objects. And I just want to align it to the center of the material. I don't want to align it vertically. I just want to align it horizontally. Oops. Select it again horizontal. And that fixed my alignment issue there. Now come back, go down to the bottom text, and edit text spacing and curve. And if you notice, the orientation of the character doesn't really matter. As long as I get in between them and click, they will move together, but keeping themselves aligned to that curve. Uh, those are, yeah, they're okay. These are okay. I don't need to adjust that. It was just that S and A. I don't know. Let me zoom in here a little bit and kind of tighten these up. Yeah, I think that does look better. Okay, click off of that. Select my text again. Align horizontally to the material. Close, and I'm ready to go. So I can now v-carve my text, I can v-carve my center circle, and I can carve whatever uh, artwork I want to put in here. Now, let's say, for example, I need to put another out. I'm going to v-carve this into a pinstripe, and I want another one out here. Well, it's very simple. We have a quarter inch gap between here and here. We want a quarter inch gap between here and the outside line. These are three quarters of an inch tall. 
plus a quarter of an inch for this gap, plus a quarter of an inch for this gap, we'll want another circle an inch and a quarter out to the outside of this text. So we'll just select our circle, come down here to offset selected vectors, outwards, and one inch and a quarter, click offset, and there we have it. Our text is centered around the circle, between the two circles, and we are almost ready to calculate toolpaths. One thing I like to do just to reduce the number of toolpaths I have to calculate is I will group selected items that will use the same bits. So I'll grab this outside circle, hold down shift, grab this one, come over under edit objects, group those select selected objects so that now if I choose either one of these circles I choose both of them. I'll also grab this text, hold down shift and that text, group those selected objects so that no matter which one I grab, I grab them both. Now I'm ready to calculate toolpaths. So we'll go over here, we'll choose our text, I'll choose a V-carve engraving toolpath, and for the text, I don't want to cut super deep into the my material, so I'm going to use a 90 degree bit. I'm going to make my start depth zero. I'm not going to use a flat depth, and I'm just going to accept everything else the way it is and preview it. So let's calculate that toolpath, and we'll preview it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make this toolpath color black just so you can see it a little easier. That looks good. We'll go ahead and close it. I'll go back into my 2D view, select my circles, and I'm not going to V-carve these two lines because that would basically come in and remove everything in between them. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a profile toolpath. And for this one, I'm going to select a 60 degree V bit because I want a little bit of depth. I'm also going to start use a start depth of zero and I want to cut it about a sixteenth of an inch deep. But I want that real sharper angle with the 60 degree V bit. It's going to do it in one pass. I'm going to cut on the vector. I'm not going to use a separate last path. Uh, last pass. I'm not going to create any tabs. However, I am going to ramp my plunge into the material. And I'm going to do a smooth ramp over a distance of one inch. Meaning that when the bit comes over to start cutting, it's instead of plunging straight in, it's going to come over to the start position and slowly, at my plunge rate, start feeding into the material as it moves forward around the cut. And once it reaches the cutting depth of a sixteenth of an inch, it'll then take off at the feed rate, come around and finish up the carving, lift up, move over to the next vector, and start moving in X and Y as it's plunging into the material. I'm sure if you've uh, if you've done much V carving at all, you'll find certain situations where, when a bit plunges straight in, after the toolpath has finished running, you'll see that little round mark, that little indication where the bit has plunged in. Doing a smooth ramp over a distance will eliminate that little mark it'll get rid of it completely. Okay, let's go ahead and move on down. I'm going to accept everything else as it sits. Let's calculate that toolpath, then preview it. And we'll change those to black also so that you can see them easier. And there we have it. I have my modeling resolution turned way down so it looks kind of jagged but we have a nice sixteenth of an inch deep pinstripe here. 
then our text, then another sixteenth of an inch deep pinstripe here. And that's the way it goes. That's how I apply text to a curve of a known radius or diameter. There are other ways of doing it, but that's a subject for another video. So that's going to uh, end this one. If uh, anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to uh, leave them down in the comments. If you got anything out of this video, please give me a thumbs up down there. And if you'd like to be notified the next time I post a video, uh, subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. Now, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and y'all take care.